There's six bullets I want <clears throat> to, excuse me, read to you, and uh, I think they're important for, for at least for me, maybe for us to understand. Um, the dynamic of des domestic violence and sexual uh, violence, sexual assault, it's a really complex deal. I think all of us know that. There's an intersection on that of a lot of factors. Those could be uh, factors that took place of how we grew up, the environment we've been in. Certainly it could have alcohol or substance abuse that might be aware of that, uh, with that, as well as mental health issues. The intersection of those types of things, very complicated, right, very complex things. We saw some of those types of things take place here on our campus when, when we had an issue with a young lady, Sasha Menukori, that was a swimmer for us here at Mizzou. And we saw those intersections at a very complicated level and a very strong dynamic that said, boy, this is, a, this is an issue that really impacts lots of particular areas throughout our communities. Um, that we know that 20 people per minute, per minute, amazing to me, 20 people every minute are victims of rape and physical violence and, and stalking by an intimate partner right here in the U.S. One in three women and one in four men have experienced rape, physical violence, and or, or stalking in their lifetime, which would mean a lot of us in here, either we've experienced that directly, we know people that have experienced that, or we certainly are aware of those types of issues, many of us in this room, uh, based upon the statistics. Eighty percent of the victims are women, and 15 percent victims are men. Nearly half of the men who abuse their wife will abuse their children too. To think despite the, these known statistics, experts say domestic violence is underreported by anywhere between 70 to 90 percent. So sexual assault, domestic violence is the most underreported crime in the United States. The most underreported crime of all crimes committed in the U.S. is sexual assault and domestic violence. And 99 percent of those people that are doing the assaulting are men. 99% of all the people that do the assaults in this country are men. And I think the, the, the issue here for us, as we think about that for a minute, those statistics are fairly sobering, is what can we do collectively, men and women, in our community to step up and say, why are we allowing these types of things to happen? What are the things that we can do to be able to go forward, to really step up, speak out, and be a part of something where there could be a movement for all of us to be able to divert our society and our community away from these types of statistics going forward. My mother, who was born in 1926, only went to the eighth grade because her father told her that was enough education for a girl. But she was undeterred. She lived, she worked, she moved to Kansas City. She had three children. I was the youngest. And when I entered high school, she decided to enter high school with me. She went to adult evening classes, but she had to go year round. And in 1970, we both graduated from Central High School. Undeterred, she waited until I finished my undergraduate degree, and then she started college. And it took her 20 years, but eventually she received her PhD. These women in my family each encountered men who sought to crush their spirits, men who were intimidated by their beauty, intimidated by their intelligence, intimidated by their strength, intimidated by their determination. But they survived and they lived. But their stories, their stories call forth for a generation of men who will be confident in who they are who will not be intimidated by anyone. Men who understand that everyone deserves respect. Everyone's life deserves to be honored. And most of all, men who understand the greatest commandment, which is to love your neighbor as yourself. So many of our children come to school with insecurities. Food insecurities, housing insecurities, domestic violence. Children who grow up in homes where violence is present are six times more likely to commit suicide. They're 24 times more likely to be sexually assaulted and 100 times more likely to be abusers themselves. And so that's why I'm here this morning, and I think that's why we're all here this morning, to affirm our commitment to awareness and prevention. 
It's a good morning for those who called the hotline last night because they were still struggling with the recurring nightmares that happen at 2 a.m. every night because that's when they were raped. And their journey to healing is incomplete, but it's helped because there was someone on the phone that they could talk to, someone who knew what they needed. It's a good morning all across our state. It's not just those who were able to be served in this community, but in the 125 programs around our state, more than 30,000 women, children, and men were served in programs in the state of Missouri. Violence against women and gender violence issues, this is not just women's issues. This is also a men's issue. We of men have to step up. As men, we have had many times the power and the privilege. What's going on with men is a question. Sometimes we classify this as women's issues, which leads to what we call absence of accountability. How can we change the definition of what it is to be a real man? When we talk to our male student athletes in Men for Men, we defined it. What is a real man? It's respect all people, especially women. Always do the right thing and live a life that matters. Real man, the acronym for real. My sister now is 18 and she's getting ready to go to college. And one of my biggest fears is truly coming to realize that she's going to school up in New York and I'm here in Missouri and my older brother's in Germany. And I'm, frankly, I'm nervous and slightly terrified that there's nobody up there to look after her like I've looked after her her entire life. But then Coach Ivy came and asked me to speak at, the, at this program and then I was put at ease knowing that programs like this exist all across the country. And it helps you realize that with this in place, my sister will be protected like with a big brother out there who, I'm, who I probably will never meet and hopefully never have to hear from because he's doing his job correctly. It's responsibility of all of us that if we see something or if we hear something, then we own it. That's on us. You know, and it's all too often, particularly with regards to sexual assault and domestic violence, we'll find people that say, you know, I heard about something over here or I saw something take place. But, but I don't want to get involved, right? I, I don't think I should get involved. That's not my business to get involved. The reality is it's all of our business to make sure that we step up. It's all of our business to be able to own it when we see these things take place and absolutely to be able to model the behavior we expect from other people.